after running the create react app command the next is you want to navigate into this folder so that you can run it on the browser so to go to this folder you say cd which stands for change directory cd then the name of the of your application we named as new app so we're going to say cd new app you use whatever name you give to your app while creating it so since we used new app this is cd new app the next is you run npm start this npm start we run it on the browser for you immediately you run it you're going to see something like this so this part this part is your port your application is running on port 3000 at least mine is running on port 3000 yours might be different so whatever port you have here is the port you see here on the browser and if for any reason yours didn't open automatically on the browser just copy this and paste it on your browser then you will see your application so here is it uh then i've edited the react app yes you might see if you, if you just created a new app you might see the ads logo or some other stuff but then don't worry you are still good you are still good so i've edited mine that's why you just see this welcome to react this is what i put in my own quotes well if it's a new app you will see maybe the ads logo or something so let's go straight to the architecture of the for this folder this new app this folder has these things inside it number one the node modules this node modules contains the dependencies of the application what your application depends on now uh, if i install anything maybe i need to use anything in my react application and i install it it goes into these node modules so this node modules usually contains uh most of the files and folders that you will need in fact it is the heaviest folder in your react app it is the heaviest it contains a lot of things let's open it and just see some of these things so it contains a lot of things don't worry you don't need to come here to do anything i don't think you have any reason to do that so just know that these node modules contain the dependencies of your application those things that your application depends on for instance, uh, I explained Exios to us in one of our classes, and I told us that you're going to be using Exios to make uh, API request, API call, like to make a request to the back end. So if we install the Exios, in order to be able to use it in React, once we install it, it comes into this node modules. So that's the node modules. It's a folder that contains the dependencies of the application. Next is this public folder. This public folder it contains the file this is our main interest here this index.html it contains the file that goes to the public it contains whatever you see on this page now your whole react app we most likely have just the one html file and this is the file index.html you don't need to create it it's already in your react application so let's open the index.html and see what and see what is inside it so i'll go to the public folder then index.html so here is the index.html folder then you see this this div ideal now in order to understand what we'll be doing let me explain something here using um, let me create a new HTML file so that you understand this thing. Now, this is how your application will work. Let's say let's, this is the ID root. Uh, sorry, ID equals to root, I guess. So, this is how it's going to work. If I am on the landing page, of course, I'm assuming that the name of this file is index.html. So, if I am on the landing page, it's going to put the content of the landing page, whatever we write inside the landing page, it will put it inside this div. 
Now, if I move from the landing page to the about page, it's not that it will go to another page. No. What it will just do is, it will, it will still be on the same page. But then, the content of this uh, of this route will just change to the content of the about page. I come again. Not traditionally, this is how we've been working. Let's say, let me create a folder to quickly explain something. So, so I've got the folder called testing here. So, let's create files inside our folder. No, let's focus on these two files. Traditionally, if I have a landing page and about page, then both of them used to be different files. And based, based on what we did uh, in, when we learned HTML and CSS, so both of them would be different files. This would be a page and this would be another page. But in that, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. The way it works is that if I am the landing page, the content on the landing page will be here. If I move from the landing page to the about page, I am not leaving the landing page. Technically, what it will just do is it will take whatever is inside this place, whatever is there, and just bring it to this place. So it's not that I will need to create a about page. No, all I need to put, all I need to do is just put something like this there. So. Instantly, it will take us uh, just put something like this there. So it's take whatever is there and bring it to this same page and replace it with whatever we have here. So we we actually be on a single page throughout our application. Our application, like even when we are moving across different pages, even when users think they are moving across different pages, they will actually be on the same page. Just that the content of that page will be changing to something else. So to them, they will assume they are navigating across different pages so uh this process since i work like this we call them spas single page application they like you make the your whole page we only have one our whole application we have just one page then you change the content of this single page so let's proceed then uh you will you will learn more about spa as we proceed in the training but not in today's class as we proceed in the training we got to our turn now uh let's move on to another thing so this will be the only page that you're going to create for the application uh, that you have in the application i mean the only html file now this html file we get its content from index.js if you get its content from in, in react most of the codes will be writing with the react codes uh there will be javascript codes most of the codes will be writing with JavaScript. So this index.html will get its content from index.js. Now, the index.js is located in the SRC folder. This is it. Uh, let's get out of the public folder and go to the SRC folder. So this is the index.js. This is index.js. So let's open the public uh, SRC folder and go to the index.js. So whatever is there will be sent to the index.html. As you can see, you are getting the that document that gets element by ID. We are targeting this place. We are targeting this place. 
in order to send information then you don't need to write this also you will see it already let's now make some adjustments okay, if i remove what i have here and i just put a div and in this div i put good morning good morning so when i get to the browser whatever i put here will be sent to the index.html file such that uh, on the browser user will see good morning if i want to display anything again i can come here and create maybe another container and say uh -huh. yeah. so again this will be sent to the index.html file and it will be sent to the browser now uh as i explained in our last class in react you'll be using something we call gsx gsx allows you to write html quotes directly in javascript files even though this is a javascript file i'm able to write html quotes here react has undoed all of that for you you don't need to think about how this works react and use that for you so just come write your html code then we have to undo the rest so whatever you put inside this place will be rendered whatever you put here will be rendered to the browser it will be rendered on the browser by sending it to this place and this sends it to the browser so that it can be loaded on the browser so i'm going to the browser now you see it good morning how are you doing now uh you will agree with me that putting all your codes here will make it off I'm going to make it off so what you'll be doing is you will in fact you will have little or nothing to do with this particular file the convention in react is that uh, there's another file called app.js now the app.js also comes with react application this is you don't need to create it also it's going to run the create react app you will see the app.js so what happens is this index.js gets its own content also from app.js remember index.html gets its content from index.js index.js also gets its content from app.js so whatever is in the app.js will be sent to this index.js the index.js will now send it to the index.html so how we move this here and i will go and write some things here then i will now show we're going to discuss how to bring whatever you write in this app.js to the index.js so let's discuss that together how would you list everything here and let's start we want to create something we call components 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 is like a, a reusable code a segment of code that has its own html css and javascript a segment of code that has its own html css javascript it has its own logic so uh let's get our first component together we are going to be you can have a class component or a functional component but for this program we are going to focus more on the functional component we still discuss the class com component but then that will be maybe close to the end of the training most of the training we focus on the functional components so let's create a functional component together and component is very very simple it's just like it's just a javascript function it is so let's create a javascript function together const app done so this you have this javascript function this function in order to make it a component you want to make it return a gsx you want to return a gsx you notice know, a gsx so i want to put the html a component returns this it returns gsx so let's put some things here how are you today how are you today so the but in order to be able to use gsx I remember this is a javascript file in order to be able to use gsx here in this place you need to bring in something called react say import react from react 
just by having this single line you are able to run you're able to use gsx um, in this file if this is not there we actually not allow you to run this j s x so whenever you want to use gsx i mean you want to use html directly in javascript then you bring this so this is a component this component returns this it returns your gsx next is you want to export it out because if you don't export it out you won't be able to use it you won't be able to import it elsewhere so you want to export it out to export it you say export default i will explain the meaning of these defaults ah. so what you're just saying is ignore this default for now you are exporting this function so because you've exported it here you can now import it here that's why we have this line import app from app let's let's add this together and let me explain how this works import app now you see this app is the name of this function meaning that if this function name were to be gems of course you export gems so this becomes import gems from now this other one is the name of the file this file app.js so you don't need to put the extension if you are importing javascript files if, like if you are importing things from a javascript file you don't need to put the extension that's because naturally react assumes that most of those things you will be importing is javascript but if it was to be other extensions then you put the extension but if it's javascript you don't need to put dot j s so what this is going to do is it will import these gems from this app dot j s so uh, so it will import these gems from the app dot js so let's come back here after importing gems here next i will now use it here so to display it there you use it as though it's uh it's a tag now this is the reason it is compulsory that your your component must start with uppercase it must that's because you'll be using your component as though they are html tags and since html tags are written in lowercase so uh for we have to be able to undo things appropriately for, for we have to be able to differentiate tags from components you write tags with let me close this so you write tags with uh you start it with uppercase again let's summarize what we've done so far here we tell the component and a component is just a function that returns a gsx like this so then you export it out after exporting it out you can import it here then after importing it here you want to display it you want to send it to the index.ht and also use it here you can also like it as a self-closing tag like this it's also fine it will still work fine so whichever one you think is not convenient for you you can not i didn't put it here i didn't put it here just not position here. this is fine so you can use it as a self-closing tag like this or you write it in four like this both of them will work fine so when you get to the browser now you're going to see the content of this on the browser so how are you today let's move on next is i want to explain the meaning of these defaults and what it does this default tells your react application that this james is the default content of this page what does that mean you see it's possible for you to have more than one function here let's create another one let's say i have any name i just say this is a function called any name and uh, this function so it's on the uh, let's see. I said, um, my name is Taye Abida. So, 
here I have another component here so what I want to do is I want to export the two of them so that I can import them here so you can only have one default this James is the main content and that is why you have default this cannot be default again but you can export the two of them out in fact you can export as much as possible but only one of them needs to be default so this default just tells the reactor that this is the main content of this page and how does that affect the importation because this affects the way you import it let's come here the way you import it is that if it is the default you are allowed to use anything of your choice once i say import anything from this file since this is the default james is the default here then it will automatically import that gems as anything so i can come here and say anything if it is default then you can import it the way you, like you can use any name to import it and it will still work fine that's the first thing i want us to note you still have the same results no difference next is oh sorry next is if uh if it is the default you write it like this if it is not the default how then do you import it well you can't come here and say any name no reason is because you know i remember i told you that since it's the default you can call it you can use any name of your choice this any name we still assume that you are calling on this default I come again even though this one is any name it is still assumed that you are calling on that default since the default allows you to use any name of your choice so in order to call on orders that are not the default you need to enclose them uh in curly braces like this by enclosing them in curly braces it knows that oh this is not the default then it comes here and imports it then if you want to display that on the screen then you come here and say any name so um, so this we take the content of this file of this part my name is Taya it will come if we import it then display it on the screen let's check on the browser what's going on any name so he's saying that he can't find this any name. What are we doing wrong with you? Any name? Oh, I didn't save it. Sorry, my bad. My name is Taye Abidakun. So let's proceed. So we checked the default, we checked uh the named components and others so next uh, now before we leave this part it means that in this place react is the default one that's why the app imports react it is the default there next is i want us to check something here if you notice when we wanted to import we use dot slash but in this place there's no dot slash around this place and this one but you have dot slash here you have dot slash here so what's the meaning of that when should you use dot slash and all of that not if you are importing from the node modules you just write the name directly these things they are being imported from the node modules if you are importing from the node modules you just put the name here but if it is not the node modules you put this so these ones they are not located in the node modules i hope that is clear enough so since this is not in the node modules then that's why we have this like this this just goes to the roots of the src it goes straight to this this dot slash we go straight to this src the root of this src and look for the file app.js next let's write some other codes together I just say import James, then uh, I just export the files. Now it, it is a convention that 
you name your default as the name of your file it's just a convention it is not compulsory but this is a common practice and i will advise that you stick to it that's why this is also react as this is so i've named this then i'll come here and say import app Now I some cuts in. You know, remember I said you can write, you can return JSX in your component, but then you can only return one thing at a time. You can return two things. Let's say I want to return another thing inside this. Let's say I have something like this. So I want to return these things. Maybe I have another div, and uh, I say, "Good morning." As you can see, this is already underlined it. The thing is, you can't return two items. You can only return one. You can only return one. So, does that mean that our whole page we only have one item? No. Let's see how to handle it. So, what I can do is that uh, you can wrap everything here in just one container. So let's see this is working fine that's because this component is still returning just one item which is this div that single item can now have a lot of other items within it it can have hundreds thousands millions as much as you want it to be it can have a lot of things inside it but then you only need to return just one item that one item can now have many things in it as we have here. So, if you don't want this extra div, because if you check your browser, you will see and do because an extra div in your application, it will. Maybe you don't want this extra div. You can easily write it like this. That's fine. It's fine. It will still work. Fine. You are still returning just one item. Then that one item now contains these two. One, two. It's fine. So you're going to be seeing something like this. Maybe if you check online videos, and like, so it's because you don't just want your browser to have extra div. You know, if you check, if you go to the browser and you go to Elements and you check it, you're going to realize that you have an extra div. Maybe you just don't want it to happen. So yeah, please let's proceed. Let's want to write some code. So I want to bring in variables and be able to use that in our code. Note, whatever I write, no, this is a function. And you still assume that the codes inside this function are JavaScript codes. That looks funny, but that's it. It's assumed that the codes inside this place are JavaScript codes. The only place where you are not writing JavaScript codes is inside this return. Aside this return, it assumes that those things inside this function are JavaScript codes. Meaning that if I come here, once I'm not within this return, if I come here and I write it, it doesn't think it is JSX. No. It assumes I'm writing JavaScript codes, meaning I can create a variable here. I can say variable name equals to Tolu. So I've created a variable called name, and the value of name is Tolu. So and I can now display it on the screen. Now to display it here, I want to display it here in my HTML. Again. It assumes that whatever you return here are JSX code. So if I come here and I say good morning name, it will read it as HTML code and not JavaScript. So how then do you make it see this variable? How you need to do is you wrap it in curly braces like this and put it there. So whatever you put here like this within curly braces will be seen as JavaScript code. So this becomes good morning to you. I can do more than that then I can say you can write simple JavaScript code there. I can say math.random and this will generate a random number. This becomes good morning then the random number generated. Let's go to the browser. Good morning, open zero four two five blah blah blah. So to write JavaScript code, just within HTML, just enclose it here in curly braces, then put whatever you want to. 
Next is, I want to be able to change this name. I'll change this back to name. I want to be able to change this thing from Dolly to something else. So maybe when I click on a button, I want to change that name from Dolly to maybe Tyro. So let's get the button together. Let's say change name. I'll just say change name. So I want to add an event. Of course, you know what events are from your knowledge of JavaScript. So I'll click. Now, here, the way you write event is a bit different from what you know in JavaScript. The only being small letter, but the event name itself will start with uppercase. This is capital letter C. This is an upper case, unlike in JavaScript, when everything will be in lowercase. Here, this is an upper case. So let's say I want to say a mouse over. This mouse will start with upper case. So oh, mouse down, the down. It's also in upper case and I'm like that. So this becomes on click. Then what do I want to do? I want to change this name from Tolu to Taiwo. So now I want to get a function so that when I click on this button, it's going to call on that function. Then that function will not be the one to change this name from Tolu to Taiwo. So I will say when I click on this call on the function, you are yet to create a function, but Let's assume the name I want to give to the function is change name. If I run this, this is how we used to do it in JavaScript. This will not work. Here in the world of React, you put this in curly braces like this. So when you click on this button, you are expecting it to call on a function called change name. Let's create a function together. Uh, cost. change so let's first do something very simple let's say alert high so if i click on this button you expect the color on this change name and it should alert high but then there is an here he react when you want to call on a function you don't put parentheses at the front like this because this is how the act works when it loads the page you know this is a javascript file not html file this is a javascript file so when it sees this it will automatically trigger the function without even waiting for you to click on this Immediately the browser, the browser loads instantly it will call on this function called change name it won't wait for you to even click on it or anything as the browser loads once it sees this it will call on that function so that's not what you want all you need to do is just remove the parentheses and it will work fine so this now we wait for you to click when the user clicks on this button it's going to alert i let's test that and see that everything works fine hi let's click again hi let's move on Next, I want to change his name from Tolu to Taiwo. So I can now say name equals to Taiwo. No, not something. I'll just say alert name. Now what I want to do is when you click on this button, it's going to call on this function. Then this function will change the value of name to Taiwo. Then this will alert name. Of course, since you are using name here, this should also change to good money Taiwo. Since once you click on this button, you just that this one, directly you change this name to Taiwo then. This will alert good morning. Uh, this will display good morning Taiwo. So let's run it together and see how that works. So I'll click on this button. Taiwo, meaning that the name has changed from Tolu to Taiwo, right? Then, now what's going on? This Tolu is not changing. This is still Tolu. If I click on it again, the name is actually Taiwo. But then somehow the browser is not picking that changes it is not reflecting on the browser on the screen so let's discuss why it's like that 
The reason is this. The way React works is that, uh, from your knowledge of JavaScript, when you create a function like this, in order to run the code inside that function, you need to trigger that function, right? Like, from your knowledge of JavaScript, you know that when you have a function, for you to run the code within that function, you need to trigger, you need to call on that function. But then, in our code, there is no point in our code where we are calling on this app function, we haven't. Meaning that React is the one handling that for us. We are not the ones doing that. Again, your component, you are not the one triggering the function. React is the one handling that for you. And the way React handles it is that, uh, in order to put it here like this, if you call on that function, I want the code there. Fine, that's why you will see all of this. But when you make any changes, just like this. This will work fine, but the apps will not rerun this. It will not. And before you can, let's let's use our knowledge of JavaScript to understand this part very well. Let's say I have a the landing page. Okay, let's say I have a script stack here, and I have a button here too. Button. Click, change, change. Then let's say here is initially name is Tolu. Right from the beginning. Then change name. So let's create a function called change name together. this let's say name and let's name the total so I will remove this from here so name is Tolu right from beginning then I can say root dot inner text equals to name so of course this we take this to loop and put it inside this place now when i click on this button i want to change the value of name from to to title so i'll say name equals to title now if i say halat name when i click on this button it, it's going to alert title but that doesn't mean that you automatically see the title here, no, until you write this command. Oops. Dot inner text equals to name. Until you write this command again, this line again, before this is displayed on the screen. Until you run this command again. Now, there is, this is where the issue with React is. React is not writing this again is not this is not in our code and of course you are not you are not to do that you are not to we have to handle that for you so what we want to do is we in order to do this to make this thing happen react does not recognize this like this if you want to be able to make this value dynamic and you want the browser to reflect the changes i can't make it if you want it to be dynamic and you want the browser here to reflect the change that is if anything happens to this variable you want your browser to automatically pick it and display the new value just like the way we change this to, we change this from tolu to taiwo you want the browser to automatically know that oh this thing has changed i want you to reflect the new changes immediately then you don't you don't use this how then do you go about it use something called use states use states use state is one of the React hooks. React hook is a topic that we're going to look at as we proceed. But for now, let's just use one of them, use states. Uh, React hook starts with use. Use something. Use, use. You see use effects, you see use states, you see use, use a lot of things. So, let's bring in use states. 
we import it also here. Okay. We say use states. So we've imported use states. All the act hooks can only be used within functional components, meaning that these use states cannot be used here. This I'm not inside this functional component. I can only use it here. Now I'm within the functional component. I can't use it here, but I can use it here. So let's say I also make use of use states together. Uh, how we delete this for now? And let's focus on use states. To make use of use states, you say you create a variable. Okay, let's take it step by step. Use states is a function. You see, your hooks are actually functions. Your React hooks, just like use state is a React hook, it's just a function. Then you trigger that function. Once you trigger this function, this function expects a parameter. So you need to put a value there. I can't again. You trigger the function, but it expects a parameter. So you need to put a value there. Whatever value you put here will be sent to the use state. So I can put, let me say, it's just put a value there. It can be a string, it can be a number, it can be anything. So here, yeah, I'm putting it here. Let's talk about the significance of this. It or any number, anything. It can be a name. I can put style with there. I can put. I can put anything I like there. So let me just put this for now. I'll say twelve. Just put a number there. Let's discuss what happens. Once you call on this like this and you put a value there, this use state with is going to return an array. It will return an array. So you want to store that array somewhere. I come again. That use state, when you call on use state, it returns an array. The first value in the array will do whatever number you put here. And the second value in the array will be a function. Use state returns an array. Where the first value will do whatever number you put here, or whatever value, not necessarily a number, whatever value you put here, where the second value will be a function. So I can say, let ARL is this. So ARL index 0 will be 12. Now, I can now say, let this be Tolu, such so that ARL index 0 will now be Tolu. The second value is that function that allows you to change the first value. The second value is a function that allows you to change the first value. So what I'm going to do is I can say ARL index one is now going to be a function that will allow me to be able to change the value of this value. So I can say let's name be ARL index zero. So my name, good morning, name. This now gives me good morning, Tolu. This is how you go about it. Good morning, Tolu. So when you click on this button, you want to be able to change this name. You want to call any function called change name. Let's create a function together. Const change name. It looks like this. Now, uh, you can't just say name equals to another thing. Mm -mm equals to maybe title you can you can you can only do that by using the second value in this array so let's say let's save the second value elsewhere i'll just call it very second and that will be arr index one so the first value is whatever you put there the second value is a function that allows you to change the first value so only this second can change the value of this to loop so I will come here and say second. But remember, the second value is a function. So you take out the function, and you now put the new value there. So this, whatever value we put here, we replace this. It will replace this. So let's shorten our codes. Instead of writing this and this, I can shorten this. We've done the structuring. So I can say, let's name second so name second the name will be the first value returned by this array the second will be the second value returned by this array but note you state to return two values the first will be uh whatever you put here why the second will be a function that allows you to change it so i hope that is clear enough 
but then it is a convention. This is going to work fine. Let's first practice this. Let's try on it on the browser and see the results together. Good morning, Toby. When I click on this now, you can see it has changed to Toby. It's fine. But it's a convention in the world of React that this function should be change whatever is there. So this one will be change name. Of course, since you've named this change name, I can say I can just call it so name. Is a convention just you know it's good to follow convention you know and then so i will now call this change name then this is change uh, change name but yeah, that's how you follow convention so whatever you put here is a convention that whatever name you put here should be change and whatever name we put it so uh let's stop here let's have a recap now when we talked about the architecture of the folder number two we said in order to use gsx we bring in rap number three in order to use dynamic variables that will, your browser will be able to reflect the changes immediately you bring in use state use state is a react hook then uh this is state expect a parameter Whatever parameter you put here will be the first value in the array that will be returned. Then the second value will be a function that allows you to change the first value. Then for the sake of convention, we're going to say change add. Since this is name, this becomes change name. So uh, then when you click on this button, I told you this is capital letter C, then equals to rename. You don't put parentheses at the front of this like this. You put parentheses, it's going to trigger it as the browser loads. So when you click on this button, if you call on the name, then the name will not call on change name. Let's stop here.